Hey guys, vocês já pensaram em o que os professores gringos que ensinam inglês para os brasileiros pensam sobre o sotaque brasileiro? Eu também tenho interesse em saber isso, então hoje eu vou entrar no aplicativo Cambly como um estudante essa vez, não professor, e eu vou falar com alguns professores para descobrir o que eles acham do sotaque brasileiro falando inglês. Vou perguntar sobre a pronúncia e os erros de, de pronúncia e sotaque dos brasileiros, dos alunos. Então, vamos lá! Primeiro, eu vou falar sobre o aplicativo Cambly. É um aplicativo bem legal se você está tentando aprender inglês e não tem muito tempo para fazer as aulas ou não tem muito dinheiro para pagar para as aulas. Você pode fazer em qualquer horário do dia também, quando você tem tempo para treinar e estudar inglês ou quando você está a fim de aprender. Então, é muito legal que você pode simplesmente entrar no aplicativo qualquer horário do dia, escolher seu professor e fazer uma aula de quantos minutos vocês quiserem. Todos os professores são nativos de inglês e é muito, muito legal para praticar. Você não vai ter desculpas para praticar e treinar como nativo de inglês usando esse aplicativo. Se vocês baixam o aplicativo e usam o código SOTAKI, vocês vão ganhar 15 minutos para experimentar o aplicativo. Então, agora vamos descobrir o que os professores acham sobre o SOTAKI dos brasileiros. Um, I think the accents that Brazilian students have certainly uh, varies from student to student. Obviously, the A1 students who are just starting their English learning journey have a much harder time, you know, being understood. Whereas my one student, as I said, from, from Belo, um, he was, you know, at least a C1 or C2, and his accent was, was like you, like basically American, an American-sounding okay. accent. Um, so I never understood how he spoke that well, but But he did, and he never believed me when I told him he spoke that well, but he did. If you had to kind of describe what you think about the, the Brazilian accent when, when they're speaking English, um, what, do you, what do you think about their accents? I think it's beautiful. I think it's just beautiful. To, to, as, as far as I can say, um, it seems that many Brazilians talk too quickly. So sometimes they mispronounce words just because they're mixing them together, mm -hmm. although As an accent in general, I would say it's one of the easier ones to understand. I, I won't name countries where it's, it's harder, but if there were a list, I, I think Brazil would be near nearer the top, one of the easiest to understand. Yeah. I can I can recognize a Brazilian. My, I've, t I've taught in language schools for years, so mm -hmm. that that um, that makes difference. I can instantly recognize a Brazilian accent. They have great drops in intonation, don't they? Yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. like that. And unless I'm cor correct me if I'm wrong, but um, and um, yes, it's very, very distinctive. Very often starting with a high intonation and sort of quite dramatically dropping. It's almost as if, um, and they do this when they speak Portuguese as well. They, they, it's like a kind of almost they're singing. It's this lot. It's you know up and down, up and down, uh, yeah. constant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't think of really any adjectives to describe it. Okay. Um, yes, uh, yes, yes, very, yeah, so, yeah, quite musical, as you say. The TH sound is an area where there is a point of adjustment, but that's perfectly understandable because there are only two languages in the world where the TH sound is mm. found, and that's English and French, mm. which if you, if you look at the history of English, English is greatly influenced by French. So, I mean, that's perfectly understandable as well. Um, the R sound in the initial position, uh, like Robert mm. and Robot, is also difficult. Um, and, and again, that's just practice. Yeah. You know, just making yeah. that sound. Um, but I think the commitment level that I've experienced with um, Brazilian students on Camly is so amazing. Mm -hmm. So th they can do anything that they put their minds <laughs> to. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that captures the spirit of what, you know, Brazilians are. So um, I'm glad that you, you said that. Um, yeah, and, and it's good, like, that the, the, when you mentioned the R sound, because they, they, mm -hmm. they don't have that, that sound. So anything that starts with an R, like Robert would be Hubbert. 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 Yes. Yeah. So, and that's something that I hadn't heard yet today. So that's that's awesome to hear. 
<laughs> in general, I think Brazilians are hospitable, friendly, talkative people. And I think that just comes out in their speech. They're talking really quickly and they want to get excited about it. And, and it, it, it just, it's just the way many Brazilians are. And that comes out in the way they talk. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way. That's a good way to put it. You know, that it, it's very much related to their personality. Um, I think how they how they speak, yeah. the the culture. Yeah. The, the other thing I, I knew uh, or I have noticed about Brazilians is how they pronounce that word office. Uh huh. <laughs> and it's so strange. Two advanced Brazilian students I have that don't know each other who we were talking about complicated advanced news topics and they both said office instead of office we, we were i remember one of my students we were talking about um advanced mathematics that he was learning in his programming course and then we were talking about artificial intelligence on the bbc going for an article on the bbc website so and he was able to convey his ideas had a uh, making a few little grammar mistakes, that not many, and then he goes and said, "Fissy." <laughs> I'm like, "What? How is that possible?" But there we go. Do you notice a, di a big difference between Brazilian accents speaking English and somebody from a Spanish-speaking country speaking English? Definitely, because the Spaniards, I I do notice that the the Spanish speakers actually are the hardest accent for me to understand. The, you know, I say that I can understand everybody. I understand the world, and that's mostly true. Um, but when I talk to someone from a Spanish speaking country, it's it can be really hard. I know this is going to sound strange, but uh, the Portuguese uh, English accent is rounder. Like the mm. Portuguese language just sounds, the, the mouth shape is rounder than Spanish. That's how it sounds in my ear. Like I, I hear rounder vowels, I hear rounder consonants. It just sounds round. Like the mouth is just <laughs> It's just round. Okay, interesting. And, uh, and I think the words are a little more distinctive mm -hmm. than in Spanish. To me, Spanish is like a flowing river. Mm -hmm. Everything just kind of blends together. Portuguese is, is a bit more musical. It's a bit more musical and pronounced with stops and flexions and all kinds of stuff. It's, uh -huh. it's beautiful. It's a beautiful language. One thing that they um, that I've made videos about that they do um, that they'll take a an English word and when there's not a, a direct translation for the English word in Portuguese, they'll um, they'll just kind of change how they pronounce the word and so they'll add this vowel sound at the end of a lot of words. Um, so for example, picnic is picky nicky in, in Portuguese. Um, tic tac is ticky tacky. Um, that kind of thing. Have you ever... Oh yeah, they do. They do do that. They do, you're absolutely right. They do do that. I don't always notice that and some of them do it stronger than others. And some of them do it more frequently than others, and some of them don't do it at all. Well, what advice would you give to somebody who's who's a little timid or a little um, worried about how their accent sounds? Um, what advice would you give to them to to kind of build up the courage to to come on to you know a site like Cambly and start practicing? Well, if you're already learning a second language, you are doing something that most of the people in my country. <laughs> can't do. Mm -hmm. um, so don't worry about your accent. That's just part of the process. Um, I would encourage them to embrace every step of the process because the mistakes, the stumbles, the missteps are the stepping stones to a smooth road of speaking the language fluently. Mm -hmm. And just have heart and just be strong and just do it because you are doing it. Mm -hmm. I would just encourage them every single day. Just if you want to come, come on Cambly, talk to me, talk to any of the tutors. We're here to help you and we believe in you and you can do it. That was awesome. I'd clip that and make it a commercial for Cambly and call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> Tá bom, gente. Espero que vocês gostaram das conversas que eu fiz com os professores. Todos os professores são muito legais. Foi muito divertido falar e conversar com eles. 
Eh, então, super recomendo vocês experimentem o aplicativo. Tem 15 minutos, você só precisa usar o código e vocês podem treinar também e praticar. Espero que vocês também perceberam que todos os professores estão acostumados a escutar e falar com pessoas que têm, têm sotaque. Vocês não podem ter vergonha em falar e praticar seu inglês. Então, gente, espero que vocês tenham gostado desse vídeo. Espero que vocês tenham uma boa semana e tchau, tchau.